though those codes are out, that does not mean that those are the codes that are required for the job that you're working on. So I just spelled out all the years, the additions, if you will, that these codes come out. But even though, so you say, well, now 2018 codes are out, so that's what they have to pay, right? No, not at all. So now what you have to do is now, like you always probably, you maybe have heard, maybe an adjuster, you say it's required by code, and the adjuster says, I need you to send that to me on the city uh, letterhead, showing that that city requires the code. Because that's all they care about is if the city requires it, okay? And let's think about that. Now that, that makes sense, right? Because we talked about the code requirements and the policy, as far as the policy interprets it, it's called what? OL coverage, ordinance and law coverage. So we're talking about like local ordinances, right? So we have to, that's, that's all that the policy really concerns itself with is what do the local ordinances require, the local laws? What are the local laws? Well, local is local, all right? So let's start, like, let, let's see. What is the address where we're working at? What is the address? Remember we were talking about breaking it down on the insurance estimate? One of the things we're looking at is the address. You know, another thing, you can see that on the Eagle View. Um, you, can, you can get real technical and look it up on the, the county website and see which actual city it's in. But you need to know for sure which city officially that house resides in. Like, which city is it in? If it's not a city, it might be a township, I get that. It might be a, in a county. Uh, uh, area, the zoned area. So, but if it is, then th you need to find that out. So, is it uh, is this house in a city, or is it in a township, or is it in a county? That's one of the first things that you want to know on the beginning of every single job, a prospect, if you will. Before you set out to do an inspection and an estimate and all that, you want to know is the city in, or is the is the project in the building is the property, if you will, sorry, inside of a city, uh, a township, a county, what is it, okay? Now, the, then the next thing we would look in that city, what version of the ICC codes does it require? And more technically spoken, what version of the code, the international code, does it adopt, okay? So that's where we start to talk about adoptions, okay? Now, what I wanna do at this point is I wanna show you in, in real terms, in real practical measures here, how to actually do this very, very, very simply so that you can visualize it and see that it is so easy and there should be no reason why you're not able to simplify this. Um, I know you're sharp enough to be able to get this, and I'm gonna try, and, and if you're not, through, after this, then it's my fault. <laughs> I wanna break this down and try to simplify it for you into practical measures so you can do it on your own. So, and you never guess this, but the answers and the search all starts with Google, of all places. So you can get this information on Google. So, you know, people are like, well, I don't have the code book, so I, I don't have access to this. Where do I get the codes? Um, you don't need the code book to find the codes. There are a lot of benefits to having the code books, but you do not need the actual physical code books to find the code. All right, now first, let's do this. Let's assume that the job is in Frisco, Texas, all right? So we've, we've already, let's just... Uh, for argument's sake, we've already discovered, we've already looked it up, the job is in Frisco, Texas. Now, let's also assume <clears throat> that we have no idea what version of the codes that the job is, is that, that Frisco, Texas adopts. Now, the job is in Frisco, Texas, and is it a residential job or is it a commercial job? Because we need to know that. <laughs> all right, let's just say for all intents and purposes, it is a residential house, all right? So we know that the codes that are gonna come into play here, we know it for sure, no matter what, is going to be the International Residential Code, the IRC, okay? Now, but we, what we need to know is which version of the International Residential Code will the city of Frisco, Texas adopt? 
So will they adopt the 2003 version, 2006 version, 2009 version, 2012 version, or the 2015 version, or maybe even the 2018 version, right? So let's find out. It's very, very simple. No matter which city you're in, here's what I would recommend that you type into Google. You can see already from the suggestions that I've done this before on this computer. <laughs> City of Frisco, Texas, right? You can see it's already suggested right there. This is what I want right here, building codes. Now, maybe if that doesn't work, building department, I might try. But City of Frisco, Texas, building codes. Let's see what that comes up. I don't know. I don't know what we'll find. Let's see. Ah, oh, there we go. So, the, <laughs> imagine that. The very first return that comes up is the adopted codes. So given what I've just said, we are looking, the answer we're looking for is which version of the international residential code does the city of Texas, or city of Frisco, Texas adopt? So there it is. I would, I would say, and it says friscotexas.gov, that tells me that's a city website, so it's not just some thing that it returned for you, right? It looks like there's a bunch of other helpful information here too, but I would click the first one here, and look at that, adopted codes right on the front. So let's read it out. The focus of plan reviews and building inspections are quality residential and commercial construction. Your best effort, along with ours, will achieve the goals of life, safety, energy, efficiency, energy efficiency, uh, IECC, right, and quality home construction. Residential and commercial construction must adhere to the following codes, along with local amendments, okay, and we're going to cover local amendments also. That comes in, in, the, in one of these next segments. As outlined in the adopted ordinances. <laughs> ordinances, right? O-L, ordinance and law. So during each plan review, a plans examiner, that would be for an extensive job where you need to do some remodeling um, or additions and things, looks at every aspect of construction and design to ensure compliance with adopted codes and amendments. To schedule appointment, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's get into it. Adopted codes. Now, so we see we've got 2011 ACI Manual of Concrete Prac. Don't care about that, not at all. Annual Book of ASTM Standards, Concrete and Aggregates. I don't care about that. 2014 National Electrical Code, and I, and I misspoke earlier when I said that they, they all come out every three years. The National Electrical Code is a bit different. So, um, but again, I don't, I don't think you're gonna need that uh, much until you get into some, maybe a little bit of, of um, uh, items for like a commercial roof or uh, a fire job. You know, sometimes you might need to uh, move the electrical box. Like if it's in a closet or something and you have to and the, rip out these walls and redo them, then the code's gonna require that you move that electrical box out into a different area. So a lot of those things do come in play, but if, if, if you're not gonna research and, and dig into those items, like if you feel they're necessary beyond this course, if you're not gonna do, do the research, if you're not that, you don't have that interest, if you will, then make sure you align yourself with a good engineer um, or a good architect that can keep you up to, keep you protected and your clients protected in those ways. But uh, okay, so you see the National Fire Protection Association, don't care about that. Boom, this is the one I want. Not for this job, but the, the residential code is based on the building code. And if it's a commercial job, that's what I want. But 2015 International Building Code with amendments. And then 2015 International Energy Conservation Code, the IECC, with amendments. So that just says that they've adopted these versions of the codes, which is almost the most recent. Not a lot of people are using the 2018 yet. And that now maybe you know um, why I said that we are not seeing it yet, because even though they're out for us to see it, then that city would have had to have adopted it already. So after they come out, it typically takes a little bit of time for you know the the government officials to come together and vote on, that usually has to be a, an actual vote, and uh, they 
make an amendment to their law, their local laws that says that we've now decided to up our game, you know, to the next version of the codes. And Frisco is kind of an upscale area, so it doesn't surprise me that they have basically the most recent version of the code. It would surprise me more if they had the most recent, the 2018, because it just came out. So, but this is this this doesn't surprise me. Uh, surprise me. So we've got the 2015 International Energy Conservation Code. Um, we know that that's the most recent. Recent now, I will say a little cheat here that I know about Texas, though, and let me take a second to explain this. About Texas is that the state, the entire state, has adopted the 2015 International Energy Conservation Code. So this IECC, basically, what I'm saying is the city of Frisco doesn't have any choice. So maybe you know the city of Frisco might say in here. Well, they adopt the 2012 version of the ECC. That would not be legal because um, I, I would, you know, if that were the, were the case, I would send the state adoption um, to the adjuster and say it doesn't matter what the city says. The state, no matter where you're at in the state, that's required. Okay, so you know, if the if the state is more restrictive, then that's the one we're going to use. Um, and if the city Typically, though, it, it never happens. Typically, the city is the one that's more restrictive. Uh, so, so like if you have a, for example, in Florida, let me just say this too. In the state of Florida, Florida has its own codes that are used. So the Florida Residential Code, which is the FRC, the Florida Building Code, FBC, and the Florida Energy Conservation Code, FECC. You're starting to see a pattern here. They're all the same. So if you go to those codes in Florida, you'll see that they're all basically like the FRC is very, very similar to the International Residential Code. In fact, that's what was used as the foundation to build the FRC. So if you know, you, you kind of want to know the, the International Residential Code before you ever set out to know the Florida Code. Now, in the Florida Residential Code, is, is more restrictive. So it's kind of like you ran into a city that adopted the International Residential Code, but they have a whole bunch of amendments that requires a bunch of extra things. That's kind of like the whole state of Florida, okay? So if you can understand that about the state of Florida, then it, it works kind of the same way city by city. If you understand that about the city by city, it works that way with the whole state of Florida. And there are other states as well. Um, so the good news is, is that you know, if you're going to work in multiple states, you don't need to really know, you don't need to go and learn all of the International Residential Code and then go learn all of the the Florida Residential Code as well. Like, you just need to know the fundamentals and some of, the, some of those basics. I found uh, my, some of my days in contracting in Florida, um, I found that to be so complex and just intimidating and overwhelming to the point where I didn't want to, want to learn it in Florida. Um, with the Florida codes, but now after you know going back there after Irma and having to deal with those codes and, and forcing myself to dig into them and really start to learn them, I found that much easier to do since I already had the foundation of the International Residential Code. All right, so moving on back here, we have the 2015 International Fire Code, 2015 International Fuel Gas Code, and I like doing this because you can kind of see the different types of codes that there are. Like if you were to get the full suite of um, ICC code books, this is what you would be getting here. So, and I'm going to take you to the ICC site here in just shortly, but I'm going to do it in order. So the International uh, Mechanical Code, International Plumbing Code, International Property Maintenance Code, and then boom, International Residential Code, the IRC, okay, with amendments. So, and let's just go on down here. The So now we're going we're, we're gonna to deal, the rules of this game in Frisco for this job is going to be the 2015 International Residential Code. 